Hello everybody, this is HD Shaves here. I'm back in the video. I hope this finds you well and in good spirits. So today we have an exciting shave, a few different items, um, some of them on loan, some of them uh, gifts, and um, let's just jump right into it, shall we? So the first thing is this beautiful brush here, the Declaration Grooming Blood of Kings B14, which hopefully you can see there on the bottom. And this is uh, graciously on loan from my buddy Mike. Thanks, Mike, if you're watching. Um, and I got to meet up with Mike and um, um, another friend um, over the weekend. And um, that was uh, very nice. Always good to see the shaving friends out in the wild, not just uh, behind computer screens, if you will. Um, so this is the current batch being offered uh, for Decoration Grooming. And I've tried to make it a thing now to um, try each new batch as it comes out, just for my own edification, if you will. And I must say, I'm very impressed with this knot. I was a little bit concerned about the way Mike described the knot to me, but um, it actually has suited me very well. Um, maybe you can see that there is a little bit of kind of crispy tips uh, going on there. And so it is um, a jelly knot once you get it wet. But um, if I had to compare it, I would say it's kind of like B13, but it's not maybe this one has a little bit more density and or backbone. It's hard for me to tell if it's backbone or density, both. But anyway, I really, really like this knot. So, um, and I must say that this red um, Washington style uh, Blood of Kings handle is uh, quite stunning. So I'm gonna go ahead and drop this in some warm water. Um, also wanted to give a shout out before I forgot. Um, some of you maybe noticed uh, a few weeks ago I was soliciting donations of uh, t-shirts to wear for these videos. So if you had a t-shirt that you wanted me to wear, just send it to me and I'll wear it. And um, this one is kind of a cheeky one that was sent to me um, by uh, somebody in the Great White, the Great White North, as I like to say. Um, and if you got any kids watching, maybe this is a good time to do one of these. Um, but uh, this is the top part of the shirt, and then on the bottom we have that. <laughs> uh, so I think this is uh, quite funny, and of course I'm happy to wear it. So again, I'll uh, extend that offer once again. Any kind of shirt you want me to wear, I'll be happy to do it. Okay, speaking of the Great White North, let's talk about the newest sort of release from Shave Dandy. So this is called Coconut Cow Cream. And some of you may remember I did a review of Shave Dandy Soap uh, a couple months ago, maybe. And it's not a release per se because he doesn't sell these soaps. He just kind of gives them to people when he feels like it. Or in our case, we did kind of a trade. I sent him some old razors. He sent me this and some other things. Um, but um, yeah, this is a, a cream, as the name suggests. Let me show you what it looks like in the, in the little three ounce container here. I, I love these little three ounce jars. Um, it is definitely, you know, cream. You could kind of schmear and go, as I like to say with this, but for whatever reason, I just decided to drop it in the Captain's Choice bowl today. Um, this is a lavender, vanilla, musk kind of scent. It's loosely based on a classic um, fragrance, if you will. And I must say, I really like this. Um, sometimes lavender on its own can be too... Um, kind of herbaceous or kind of medicinal smelling to me, but with the inclusion of, there's also some bergamot in this to help with the lavender, but the vanilla and the musk, this is a really nice um, scent. Um, I'm realizing now that the first couple days I used it, I thought there was like mint in this based on the scent, but it's actually just the lavender. Like it's such a sharp lavender that it almost leans into the mint category. So we'll be using that um, cream soap today. And then finally, um, very excited to show you this Gillette uh, Bulldog. This is graciously on loan from Patrick, aka the Oki Shaver, and uh, we sent stuff back and forth with each other, and he said, hey, is there anything you want to try? And I said, you know what? That Bulldog looks fantastic. And um, this has been replated, but I think this razor is originally from like 1920, 25, something like that. So um, amazing that you, know, you can make something look this great even now. Um, this is a three-piece razor, but in the unconventional way, in that you loosen the bottom, and then that's what comes out. I don't want to drop it, so I'm just going to do this down here. And then the barrel comes out like that, and then that allows you to take the top cap off. Um, as pretty as it may look, it uh, we had quite the tango this week um, in that... I mean, I had kind of been using a little bit of a rough razor before I started using this one, and so I just think some irritation that kind of built up, but I have not shaved. Um, I took an extra day off um, 
before making this video. So it's been since today's Friday, I last shaved Tuesday, right? So I took an extra day off just to try to give myself some, some chance of having an effective shave. Uh, we're going to use a Visimet Super Iridium here, and we're going to put this here in the cap, and we're going to try to tighten this down. This, this is a little bit of a strange, you know, loading style if you're not used to it. And the only thing with this that you got to make sure of is that the blade is aligned because it can be a little wiggly. Um, that looks pretty good to me. So we're going to roll with this. And I don't know if I mentioned this, but this is basically, you know, an old type uh, with a thin cap. And sometimes you can get the thick cap old types. So it's, yeah, it's basically just an old type head design made in the USA, but then it's got this bulldog style handle, which is why they call it that. Okay, enough chit chatting. Let's get into loading the soap. So I'm going to shake out as much water as I can from this knot because it holds a lot. And in my experience, anytime you're using um, a cream instead of a soap, you want to start with a drier brush just to make sure you don't um, kill the lather. That's what it looks like after it's been shaken out, the B14 knot, if you're curious. And let's go in and start loading the cream here. So, like I mentioned, um, this is made, this uh, cream is made up in uh, Canada. Um, the person doesn't uh, intend on selling it at this point, but as I always tell them, if he wants to join a hobby uh, where there's some people that are really um, in invested in it, um, excuse me, one minute. Okay, sorry about that, I was just waiting for a truck to go by, sometimes they can be quite loud because uh, they drive through the alley. Anyway, um, I was telling my friend that if he wants to start selling the soap, um, well, he knows how to find a hobby where people are very dedicated and often quite uh, needy, let's say, as customers, consumers. Um, but yeah, I've always been impressed. I've, I've, I've now tried three of his soaps. Um, two of them are soaps and have a kind of a pine accord, of all, pine accord involved, which um, turns out I really like pine. I didn't know that. Um, and so I've enjoyed both of those. And then now this uh, cream base, um, I've been enjoying this one as well. So I haven't added any water to this, and this is kind of where we are. So I'm just making sure I get plenty of soap onto here, and then we'll actually, you know, start to add some water once we move it um, to the face. So let's call it good there. I'm gonna add some warm water to the face. And here we go. So like I was saying, um, nice to meet up with a couple shaving guys on uh, Saturday, that's when that was, I had to think about it. Um, nice to meet up with them on Saturday, and then also got to meet up with um, someone who you all may know from the comments here, who goes by the name Walden. Um, got to meet up with him on Sunday night. And he actually was very kind to look at this very camera and figure out some settings that I had been struggling with. And so hopefully you can notice a difference um, in the video quality today. He sort of, uh, he made me feel a little bit better when he said, yeah, those settings aren't uh, very intuitive, so I can understand why you couldn't figure them out for so long. So that makes me feel a little bit better. But um, yeah, it's been really a very busy week. And um, as, the, as we get closer and closer to summer here, you know, my um, schedule just continues to stay busy and I am ready for it. Um, Winter hasn't been too rough, and it's certainly not over. We just got some snow yesterday. Uh, looks like some of it even stuck outside. Um, so I'm sure we've got more snow happening before we're really out of this. But um, yeah, winter hasn't been too bad. Um, it's really nice that you know this year I've been able to see more people. I mean, way more people than I was. Um, last year at the same time. So um, I'm gonna just finish face sizing this and I'll bring it back in when I'm about to start my first pass with the Bulldog.
Okay, we're back, and we have just generated a ton of lather here on this brush. Um, again, these uh, shaved dandy soaps are very easy to work with, and um, always happy about that. Okay, so I've worn up the blade here in the Bulldog, and let's start with our first pass. So the first passes with this razor this week were not too bad. Um, you can certainly feel the blade, but it's not like unbearable. And this is feeling just fine today. Trying to maybe ride the guard a little bit more than with other razors. Um, I don't know if this is necessarily true, but with some milder razors, people will tell you to ride the cap to increase the efficiency. And so with some of these more aggressive razors, I find if you ride the guard, maybe that decreases the efficiency or the perceived aggression, if you will. Uh, let me make sure that's where we're going. Okay. got quite the sound, um, probably probably because it's, you know, hollow um, on this inside here, but I will say that this is, um, it's a heavy, this is a heavier razor than you would expect for a vintage Gillette. Um, yeah, it's just, it's, it's got a nice um, weight to it. I think it has to do with kind of the thickness of the handle. Like if it were um, one of those typical old types on the ball end handle, it was a little bit thinner, but still hollow. So maybe that's where I'm noticing the weight um, difference. Also just the balance is um, very nice and you know, feels like you can really hang on to it well. Because of this thin head, you can get right under the nose quite easily. And again, going back to what I was saying um, earlier, I took some days off from shaving um, this week because I was just feeling a little bit irritated. And I highly recommend you do that. Um, if you don't have to shave for work or whatever, There's no shame in taking off, uh, you know, an extra day or two. I know for me too, um, I feel like I get better shaves if I skip a day, you know, instead of sh shaving every day, um, it just feels like, you know, my skin has a more chance to recover. And so that makes the shave um, actually better. Uh, other side probably. Okay, first pass done. Felt aggressive, but not insufferable. So I'll rinse, come back in for pass number two in just a moment. Let's either up for pass number two now. All right, let's do pass number two across and with the grain mostly. So for any of you um, who have experience using these old type razors, I'd love to hear your thoughts. Feel free to leave a comment down below. Do you find these to be as aggressive as I do? Or do you think they're just okay? And they're actually fine to use. So for a Chicago update, um, the past, I forget if last year they did, well, it's kind of hard to remember, but it seems like the past two years, um, 
due to COVID concerns and not wanting people to congregate downtown, I think the past few years they've canceled the dyeing of the Chicago River. They will dye it green um, in celebration of St. Patty's Day, which is, of course, coming up next Thursday. And this year it's going to happen. It's going to happen tomorrow morning sometime, tomorrow Saturday. And people will flood downtown and party like it's 1999. Um, as I like to say. And um, that's great. I've actually never seen the river green um, just because of the timing of when I lived here. And then again, with it being canceled two years, um, I've never actually seen it. So I'm definitely going to go see it. But <laughs> the other thing with this time of year, which happens, you know, no matter if there's COVID or not, is the weather is super unpredictable. And so sometimes people will travel great distances to come here to check out the river and celebrate St. Patrick's Day. But then in the case tomorrow, it's supposed to be like a high of 25, 27 maybe. And the thing with those temperatures here too is it's always colder than it seems because of the wind. And then, especially if you're downtown and you're right on the water like that, it just makes it even worse. So, I am going to not go freeze tomorrow. And I'm gonna wait until Sunday to sort of partially freeze. Uh, I suppose the temperatures supposed to rise quite a bit and it'll be in the 50s high of high, high in the 50s on Sunday so I'm gonna wait until Sunday go down and check out the Green River it was like last weekend last Saturday it was about 65 beautiful and then we had snow the following night like it started maybe around midnight or so. So the weather just changes so quickly here this time of year. Okay, second pass done. That felt also pretty comfy. Um, I'm gonna rinse and then come back for final third pass in just a moment. So I do wanna mention that the cream rinses off pretty nicely um, in between passes. It's kind of what I'd expect. It's not gonna be like a real heavy, um, you know, soapy feel, but that's okay. It doesn't mean it's a bad thing. Just wanted to point that out. Here's the third pass. Let's lather up. Okay, here we go. Let's do our final third pass with the Bulldog. And honestly, I think I'm just going to go the other way, but still across the grain. I think I'm going to avoid going directly against the grain. This is sort of strange. Normally I don't have to do this direction where I go from my ear in, because normally I'd just be going against. Um, so this is a nice little challenge to try to Forgot the best way to do that. And we'll see, this will be a good test too, to see how, again, because razors can feel aggressive, but they're not that efficient. And they can be the opposite way too. They can feel smooth and mild, but they're actually taking some good hair off. Um, the best example of that is maybe the Wolfman WR1.80 that I've sang the praises of multiple times on this channel. It feels relatively medium, but it's quite efficient. Um, so we'll see if this razor actually took off the hair or if I'm going to need to do some against the grain kind of touch up work. Um, boy, yeah, there was um, a lot that happened this weekend. I think I updated everybody on everything.
the last thing I'm very excited about um, is that tomorrow I have my first gig where I'm playing kind of my kind of music. Um, like my specific subgenre of jazz, if you will. I'm supposed to have a couple of those um, in December, like near the holidays, but unfortunately things got canceled and so I can't remember the last time um, I played a gig like this. So I'm super excited naturally and um, should be a wonderful gig also in the sense that I'll get to reunite with one of my old friends, um, somebody that I used to play with literally every week after I had first moved here. So always great to see him. And then I'll finally get to work with someone else who I've heard about for a while. And I think we maybe even met once or twice, but I've never actually played a gig with a guy. So. And it's at a barbecue joint, and it ends early. So, man. I'm really stoked. <laughs> so that's happening tomorrow. Um, let's feel around. Feels quite close. Um, it's the usual spot. But under there, I usually have these little spots here, like under the jaw. They feel pretty close, honestly. I'm really kind of being picky now. I'm just grabbing a couple little errant hairs, but it feels close. Um, Those are the two spots I can't resist doing the against the grain thing. Great. Wow. That's a good shave. So we learned a couple things today, hopefully. Uh, if you need to take some time off, take some time off from shaving if you're you know very irritated. And then also, you don't always necessarily have to go against um, the grain to get a close shave. So that's fantastic. Okay. I'm going to do my... Final rinse and then come back and talk to you over aftershave in just a moment. Stay tuned. Okay, we're back and the coconut cow cream, I'm gonna make sure I got that right, um, rinse as easily as you might expect. And I'm actually gonna just put on a little dab of water here um, before I apply Chateau Lux uh, Weinstrasse aftershave. Um, again, unfortunately these are discontinued now, but you don't need to use much of them if you still have them and you wanna apply them to kind of a damp face. I was thinking, you know, the lavender, musk, vanilla, that would lead nicely into a sort of fougere scent. This one has a prominent white grape note. And you can still pick up the scent from Chateau Lux directly if you want to just try the fragrance. And then Decoration Grooming makes the um, soaps and aftershave splashes now. Woo! This is a terrific scent. Quite strong, I would say too. So, you know, if the Eau de Twilight was a little bit, even just in that concentration, it was a little bit overpowering for me, but Aftershave is a nice, happy medium. So let's do a quick recap. We used the Coconut Cow Cream from North of the Border, uh, Shave Dandy, the brand. Again, I'll mention my friend, if you wanna make this stuff and sell it, we would be more than happy to purchase it. This is really good stuff. I've never had an issue with any of their soaps. The scents are approachable, but thoughtful, and the performance of these soaps and creams have always been uh, easy to use and functional, you know. We use the Decoration Grooming B14 Blood of Kings. Really like this knot. I know it's about to go away soon, so if you've been considering getting one, might I suggest that you think about buying one directly from Scott if you're into that, or of course you can always try to get one on the secondary market, but um, the hair is going to be going away soon in way for B15. And I, yeah, I really like that brush, love the knot. And then finally, let me just rinse it out, the Gillette Bulldog. Thanks so much to my friend Patrick, the Oki Shaver. I'll try to remember to put a link to his channel down below for loaning this to me. And nice to know that it's a pretty razor, but not really for me. And that's okay, uh, they can't all be. So 
With that, thank you all so much for watching, especially if you made it all the way to the end here. Um, this has been HG Shaves. Take care, and we'll see you again next time. Goodbye.